So um, last Saturday, uh, you know, my author, I've been talking about Kira Mertes. She has a charity called Fulfill Your Destiny, which all the proceeds of her book go to help people that were victims um, suffering severe brain damage. And last Saturday, my company was a sponsor with um, a lot of other companies in the local area where the money we donated went to actually buy a car for a lady who didn't have a car for five years. And in order to get a promotion at work, she needed a vehicle. And so it was really cool. It was um, Wheels for Success that actually gave her a car, which was super awesome to be part of that. And then also during the charity event, I was given an award, which is completely cool. unexpected. <laughs> I didn't even know I was up for one, but um, Karen awarded me a Hero Award, which is for Hands Eagerly reaching out, which basically is um, companies that help Plan of One 101 and um, fulfill your destiny, achieve their goal of becoming the number one Amazon bestseller. Awesome. Congrats. Yeah. The, the, the vehicle is so important with the story you told. I mean, you know, the, we're not in that metropolitan area where you can just jump on a subway car, you know, that type of thing. So it's, that's an awesome charity. We'll yeah. Shift gears. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how to become a number one bestselling author, Amazon uh, bestselling author with Tara Richter. Welcome back in. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So yeah, you know, a lot of people want to you know like write and publish a book, but it's awesome to have your book become uh, a bestseller and a number one bestseller at that. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the two differences okay. because some people don't understand the difference between an Amazon bestseller and a New York Times bestseller. So basically, to become a New York Times bestseller, first you have to have your books in the bookstore, and then you have to have mass amount of people going to the bookstore to buy the books, and they have to buy the books like more quantities of the book than any other author at a certain given point in time, you know? So that is a little bit easier for people to achieve if they're famous, because, you know, obviously, like the one thing about having the books in the bookstore is that nobody's gonna go and buy your book if they don't know that it's there, if they don't know who you are. Because I mean, for one thing, you know, the bookstores are going out of business and the ones that are there, I mean, there's thousands of books with, you know, in the bookstore. Yeah. So how is your little book going to stand out being filed away, you know, in a nonfiction real estate area? So um, so if you're famous, you know, like say you're Rachel Ray and you release a book and just talking about it on, our, on our cooking show, people are going to run and buy the book. So that's really how you become a New York Times bestseller. Now, on the other end of it with Amazon, you know, being like the next big marketplace for books, it's all online. Right. So it's a little bit easier to achieve because it's really just an algorithm. It's the same as a New York Times bestseller that you do have to outsell any other book, but in your listed category at any given point in time. So if you go to Amazon and you look, um, you know, across the top of the tabs, on the book section, there's bestsellers. And then if you um, if you tab down on the left-hand side, there's probably about maybe like 80 categories. Oh, I mean, wow. there's a lot when you kind of drill down. So one of the, the things that we do for authors, if they so choose to do the, the bestseller campaign that, that we have available to make them a bestseller, is that when I'm listing the book, I'm looking at the category when we publish to see who else is in that category and if we can outsell them. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a science behind it. Um, but then basically, it's kind of like I tell people it's like going to Vegas with a plan. I, I know the algorithm, <laughs> I know how it works, but yet it's never a guarantee because you can only see the top 100 books that are the best sellers in that category. So, you know, if you don't want to go into a category that you're going to compete against like Steve Jobs, you know, right. memoir, like you're just not going to outsell Steve Jobs. So that's kind of the thing that we do when we're looking to publish the book is, you know, based on the content and what the book is about, I'll look at the different categories and see who else is in there. If it's a bunch of nobodies, that's the top hundred, then we can probably outsell them. But so, you know, with my one author, um, Karen Murtaz with Plaintiff 101, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, well, and we have nine bestsellers, but this was the only book that we got to become number one. And since her book is about a four year um, litigation process, we had it in the law category. And funny enough, I didn't even like really look and see that John Gershom was in the category. Hmm. Even though his is fiction and this is not fiction, it's still in the same, you know, law type category because he writes, you know, fiction stories about law. So when we released the um, the the Amazon bestseller campaign on September 15th, um, and the other funny thing is like once you publish the book and you release it, Amazon does not tell when you hit at all. They don't send you an email. They're not like, hey, guess what? You you know hit number one or even just Amazon at all. So we you know do this huge marketing campaign. We do Facebook ads. We do email blasts. We do like this huge campaign to push it out, and then it's a waiting game. 
you literally sit and you have to refresh the freaking category <laughs> like every just hour. See if your book's getting up there. Just like, yes. come on, come on, come on. It grew. Yeah. And then wow. you got to flip through all the pages to see if you hit. Because even if you hit 99, you know, you're still a bestseller. And then you can use that and, you know, for marketing and everything after the fact. So you have to, and they, they update every hour. So what we did is, and of course, you know, the day that we release this, I have a speaking engagement in Miami. So we release it in the morning. And then I pack up, I'm driving down, I'm literally like stopping at like every freaking McDonald's to get Wi-Fi. Cause like, <laughs> I also can't see it on my phone. Like you have to have a laptop. You have oh, to wow. like, yeah, like see it on the desktop and I'm refreshing, I'm refreshing, it's not there. And then, you know, I get to Miami, I get my hotel room. I'm like getting dinner. By this time the author calls me, it had been like 10 hours. And she's like, it didn't hit. She's like, oh my God, it didn't hit. And I'm like, and we're, I'm freaking out. I'm like, no, just wait. I'm like, have faith, have faith. And then finally, 11 o'clock in my hotel room, I hit the refresh button and boom, she was number one. Wow. And we pushed John Grisham down to number three. Very cool. Yeah, it was amazing. So that's the thing. Nobody tells you when you hit. They just refresh their stats. And then they don't tell you where you are. And then you have to sit there and constantly, you know, follow it to see where you're at. Because, you know, she sold 355 copies the first day. And then what happens is once it hits bestseller, then we put the sticker on it. Then we re-advertise it. And then more people go back and buy it because now it's a bestseller. Love it. Yeah, you take that screenshot, I'm sure, right? Yeah, <laughs> take absolutely. the screenshot. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I was screenshotting that. Then, like, we're basically like popping bottles of champagne. We're jumping <laughs> on the hotel beds. It's like, oh, my God, I can't believe we hit. And we hit number one. Love it. You know, and pushed John Grisham down. So it's pretty awesome. So it's a, it's an overall strategy. It's much like you're going into a football game, you know, to use that quarterback analogy. You know, you're, you're making sure your special teams, everything's coordinated yeah. properly. So how, talk a little about that, maybe. Well, it's, you know, obviously it's the whole point, like I said, of like choosing the proper category so we can outsell the other authors in the category. It's also about, you know, the cover design of the book, mm -hmm. the title of the book. There's so many different aspects, um, you know, because when people are writing a book, you know, it's their baby. They're very emotionally connected to it. But when I come in, I'm looking at it from a marketing standpoint. Mm -hmm. So there's some books where like the title, I'm like, uh, that's not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. Or the cover of the book isn't going to cut it. For, 